Welcome back to the Just Fantasy Baseball Podcast. My name is Rami Lavi. Across from me, that is Vince D'Amato. We're back for another episode, another Sunday episode, another Sunday that we are recording uh, before the Sunday games. So, hey, don't, like, shoot the messenger, I guess. We're just here trying to have a good time uh, for various reasons we're recording right now. I'm actually at WFAN as we speak in a practically in a broom closet. So uh, this is a fun opportunity for me. And it looks like you're in a closet somewhere too. Vince, how you doing? Yeah, good. I'm uh, I'm out in Arizona at an undisclosed location at a bed and breakfast. We're out here for the weekend and I'll do some work stuff next week. So um, just kind of brought the setup along with me as best I could. And, you know, because I wanted to do I want to do this again, you know, and yeah, we're recording a little bit early, but um, you know, there's still a lot to talk about from the last few days and, and a lot to look forward to next week. So hopefully we can help some people win uh, win some leagues next week. For sure. And uh, if you think for a, a building that I'm in that is full of professional radio studios and podcast studios, I'd have a better setup. But uh, here we are. So um, apparently they didn't set aside a studio for our podcast. Hopefully we get to that to point talk. at some point. Yeah, you're going yeah, exactly. to have to talk to your boss. Right. Yeah. I'll have to talk to the higher ups because, you know. Next week, sitting you on top of a foosball table won't be as fun. All right. We do have some headlines from the last few days. Um, and I did actually want to ask you a question because I know we set our lineups once a week. So in our league, if you haven't been following along, first of all, you should be. We're having a great time. Um, and this you should be listening to this episode and this podcast twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. But our league, the Sandlot League, when do we set our lineups? Because I see our lineups are now open to move things around. So you can you can set your lineup for next week anytime you want, but after Saturday, so waivers will clear like Saturday at 3 a.m. or whatever time it is. And after that time, you can pick up anyone from free agency and and make whatever moves you weren't able to get from your waiver claims throughout the week. But like on Monday or Tuesday, like you can look ahead to next week and and look at your lineup and set your lineup for the following week. But yeah, you just can't make in week moves so to speak, right? So Does that make sense? do I set it for each individual day? No, no, you'd set it for each week. Okay. So like, yeah, just looking ahead, like next week, you can change the lineups for next week today, but tomorrow, once the game start, you wouldn't be able to change for that. The week, so throughout the, the week. reason I ask is Luis Hill is starting for the Yankees today. And I sure. just saw that because the, my waiver pickup went through, he's now in my lineup. So that only takes effect Monday or is that today also? So yes, that's that. If you look, let me pull it up just so I can make sure the right location. So if you're looking at your roster, right, or the, the scoring, go to your roster, right, where it says period, and it says it probably says April 8th to April 14th. Oh, I got you. So if you were to click back, you could see that's your current period up until April 7th. So got Lucille it. shows up for next week, but not, not this week. All right. Well, some headlines for you, and I'll start with one. Steven Strasburg officially retired. I know there was a little back and forth with that. Um, a guy who was a playoff hero, World Series. Was he the World Series MVP or the the, DS, the CS MVP? One of the two. Sure. Um, back in 2019 with the Nationals, and now only a couple years removed. Uh, injuries, and injuries is a big storyline this weekend, and he retires. Yeah, and I saw, what was it? it was, he was guaranteed or he was signed a $245 million. Well, there was an argument about that. Right. They, yeah, yeah. they were basically told him like, Hey, we don't want to pay you this. And it was back and forth with the national, just ridiculous stuff going yeah. on there. So I guess and they resolved it. I actually think this is probably a pretty fitting place to start when we consider all the injuries that are happening. Cause Steven Strasburg feels like one of the first guys who, you know, threw hard and ran into a lot of injury concerns, especially with his arm. And so this is probably a fitting place to start with some of these other injuries that we're going to touch on. Yeah. And, and he was a little different cause he did throw the hundred miles an hour, but he was also a guy and I'll never forget, you know, I spent my summers growing up in DC. So I'll never forget that first start against, against uh, the, the pirates or what he had 14 strikeouts or something in his first in his major league debut, ridiculous stuff. Um, and he's throwing the, you know, that big curveball. That was also part of it where like his elbows blown out, but now we're seeing all these UCL injuries. And I don't know if the UCL is that different than the other elbow injuries than we've seen in the past, but you mentioned it. So Bieber Strider, even a guy who's not maybe on your radar as much for our fantasy purposes, but Jonathan Loisaga. Mm -hmm. Those three guys all now, Strider, we don't know what the extent is yet, but Beaver and Loisa get definitely out for the season, the same UCL injury. Uh, and that's a big problem for Major League Baseball right now. 
Yeah, and there's a lot of back and forth on Twitter about, you know, what is the cause, right? Is Yeah, the- and I mean, it's been happening all morning this morning on WFN. I'm hearing, oh, it's the pitch clock. I don't think that's true. 20 years ago, there wasn't a ton of time between pitches like there is. Um, a lot of people are saying the velocity. The thing that I still think is the maybe the biggest issue is probably um, what's going on right now without the sticky stuff. That's when it really felt like it ramped up. And obviously, you remember Tyler Tyler Glasnow's rant where he's like, hey, you know, I have to grip the ball a little harder. I have these big ass hands. I don't my hands should be able to just it should just be free and easy. But the second I start having to grip it a little tighter, all of a sudden I'm starting to feel things in my arm that I never felt before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And especially when they're using new baseballs every, you know, five pitches or something. Like they're yeah, still, they're, and they're constantly balls, changing right? the ball also, right? Yep. Where there's the juice ball, there's the not juice ball. Yeah. What's going on? Yep. So I, I happen to think it's probably a combination of, you know, 10 different things. Yes, you know, the velocity is one, you know, increased spin rates, you, you know, you're flicking your wrists a little bit harder. So it's not just like you can pinpoint one thing. I think it's just a culmination of, you know, the past 10 years of how we viewed pitchers. You know, everybody wants increased velocity. Everybody wants increased spin rates. But, um, you know, even the pitch clock maybe has a little bit something. Maybe we're just that was like a tipping point. Right. So. I don't think there's one scapegoat that we can point to, but I do think it's an important question to ask Rami, right? This is going to get figured out over the next few years. I don't know how long some of this is going to take, but how do we now value pitchers from a fantasy standpoint, right? Because this is a fantasy podcast. How do we tell you to draft pitchers or or to handle pitchers? I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I mean, I think the biggest, and we'll get to this in a minute, but the biggest way to do it is to stream them. Like whoever's hot, whoever's healthy, because, you know, we talked about this. I, I was consistent on this from day one when we started this podcast. I'm not going to draft the top end guys at the top of a draft anymore. I mean, look at some of the guys who in our draft were draft, drafted at the top. You Strider and Cole were one, two, top two pitchers, right? And now Strider is going to be out for who knows how long. And then Cole's already been out. And, you know, Aaron Boone actually spoke to the media this morning already and said that Cole's going to resume throwing actually as soon as tomorrow, possibly playing catch. That's great. Um, but, you know, when you look at some of the top guys and then, you know, one of the other headlines I want to get to, but look at a guy like Michael Waka, who comes out of nowhere again and is just dealing. He's shoving like yesterday, his outing uh, for Kansas City was incredible. And it's like, wait, maybe we could just find innings here. Maybe you find pitching here. And it's kind of what I'm doing in my other league. And it's harder to do it in our league where you can only set the lineup once a week. But my other league, I'm constantly, I have like a few pitchers that I have consistently. And there's like two, three slots. And I'm just turning out like, Every day someone new is in there and I'm trying to find value almost like playing like a defense when you would stream a defense in fantasy football where you see what their matchup is. Oh, they're playing against the Jets for all those years when it was like playing against the Arizona Cardinals. It's like, oh, this is great. I'm just going to plug this defense in and they're going to dominate because they're playing against this crappy offense. So, you know, it's the same thing here. If you see a team that's playing against the Oakland A's, basically triple A, right? It's like, hey. Let me find a pitcher who's going there. You see a pitcher who's going to be playing, I don't know, in terrible weather like we had in Pittsburgh over the weekend, right, where it's basically snowing on Friday. Let me find a pitcher. Now, it's not great, you know, if you're in either of those teams or pretty good offensive teams with Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Um, But there's various scenarios that you could find pitchers or maybe you find whoever's hot on the Tampa Bay race because they seem to have hot starting pitchers coming out of the woodwork. Go find them. Um, and a couple of guys who I want to get to when we talk about streaming pitchers a little later who are like guys who have been around and now all of a sudden they're contributing um, again. And it's like, wait, OK, these guys are back now. So uh, a lot of different things. I, w- what's your take on it with starting pitching and how we view it? Yeah, so I I think I, I, I tend to agree with you, right? It, it has to be a matchup based thing because I'm even, you know, just thinking ahead to next year. I don't know if I'm going to be drafting any of the top five, six pitchers, especially, I mean, depending on where they go, but if you're talking about using like a top 50 pick, like I just can't risk having that happen, you know, in a first couple, in the first couple weeks, couple months, right. For one of your top 50 picks, just go down and have no production throughout the end of the year. Like it's just not worth it. Right. Those are picks that you need to get production from. Um, and that's why I preach, you know, draft with a safe floor. There's just no safety anymore with pitchers. And so, I 100% agree with you, right? Like we need to play matchups. We need to find, and and this is what I've talked about too, being consistent and and vigilant on waiver wire picks up, pickups is extremely important because 
you, you're going to have injuries. You're going to have things pop up and you need to know who is out there, who's available and who's going to you know provide some fantasy value, whether it's for a week or a month or whatever the case is. Yeah. And that's, this is why, I mean, auction leagues again are the way to do it because in an auction league, the value is set by the market, right? The mark, like every league creates its own market for what, what they value uh, based on how people are bidding. And if you're in a league with savvy owners, most likely, you know, the top pitchers, even the top guys were going for like 30, 35 max dollars. Whereas like that second tier of really top pitchers who are still in the top 10 of pitchers are probably going for like $25. Like I talked about with Luis Castillo going for like $26, $27. And uh, the same thing with, um, with Zach Wheeler going for $26, $27. Um, as opposed to the top players in the league are going for $55. You know what I mean? So all of a sudden you're talking about a huge gap between the top starting pitchers versus the top, you know, offensive players in the league that are a little bit more reliable. And sometimes it's so interesting because you'd think like, oh, you need to find the guys who have been consistently healthy. But I kind of was thinking like, I don't know. Like I actually said before the year without jinxing it because I'm a Yankee fan. I was like, I don't want to jinx it. But Garrett Cole has been really healthy lately. And he's 34 years old now or 33 and he's had a ton of innings on his arm. You know, a guy like Zach Wheeler, who's been the epitome of, like, reliable, you know, because he's always been healthy. When does that one point, it's like, oh, he's pitching the playoffs every year now. He's thrown close to 300 innings, probably not 300, but 250, you know, regular season and playoff innings together. The Each of the last four or five years, when's it going to catch up? Um, and then obviously you talk about the guys who just seem to never be healthy. When you talk about a guy like class, now we talk about a guy like um, – like a uh, uh, Jacob Degrom, so you know. Again, this is something. And Degrom even was a guy who was healthy every year for years until the last couple of years. So uh, it's it's a weird thing. And one of those guys who always has had to deal with injuries was Luis Severino. But his second start, I think, was more representative of what we can expect from him this year. Don't you agree? Yeah, and I, I do think this is where you know we talk about what are some big problems with baseball. Um, the only healthy pitchers that we have that were that have been Cy Young winners um is Blake Snell and then there's one more that I I miss oh and Corbin Burns right and you these are some of your best pitchers Garrett Cole now potentially out for quite a while Justin Verlander Sandy Alcantara Robbie Ray Shane Bieber Jacob deGrom you mentioned it like Max Scherzer these are these are the best pitchers in the game and they're just, you know, if they can't stay healthy, like that's, I think, you know, we talk about what is a big problem for MLB all the time. Like what are some of their biggest problems? I think that's, that's pretty big right now. I think that might be their biggest um, thing. And we just saw too the MLB, MLB PA came out with a statement and um, I don't know if you saw MLB responded. I think yep, they're, they're morning. blaming the, mm-hmm. yeah, they're blaming like the high spin rates and then the velocity teams chasing velocity MLB is. So um, yeah, right. you know, the PA be- is blaming the pitch clock. Yeah. Yep. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I, I didn't mention that. So um, it'll be an interesting back and forth, right, between the Players Association and the MLB. And um, like I said, you know, we'll follow it along, but um, how does it impact? And it's fantasy? probably a combination yeah. of things, and it's probably different for each each mm-hmm. athlete. And, um, right, right. Yep, yep. And, you know, how do we play it for fantasy? Well, like you said, you just got to kind of you, – you almost devalue pitching as a whole, right? And like you mentioned, how you play defenses. Like defenses in fantasy football are just devalued, right? And so we'll do the same in fantasy baseball where – I just I may not take a picture for the first four or five rounds next year and, and you know, just build up the best offense that I can. Yeah, that, that would be something interesting. It's almost like quarterbacks in fantasy football, which is crazy because like quarterbacks like, you know, are there, there's so many that can right. get you unless you have like one of the guys who are running a ton like Josh Allen or or Lamar Jackson. Um, the other big stories, I think, are uh, welcome to the fantasy season so far. Evan Carter and Nolan Jones finally start to pick it up over the weekend. So uh Congrats. Welcome, guys. Big round of applause to you guys because they had done nothing prior to this weekend. And finally, it feels like maybe they're starting to get to what we expect from those two guys. Two guys were pretty big hyped coming into the season. I think um, another another thing that we should we should discuss, too, is the the quick fall off of Starling Marte that you took a victory lap so soon on last hey, week. Hey, I'm taking my victory lap right now. He had a good game Saturday. He had a good game Saturday. Yeah, he got Saturday. average up to 233. Yes, like we love to see Yeah, because we're in an average league. Exactly. We play in an average league. He's What's still like batting. He's 300. 
Yeah, exactly. All right. It's higher that. than your team OBP through a week, by the way. I don't know if hey, you want to mention hey, that. Hey, hey, 270 right hey, now. I'm still beating you. So, You're losing to a guy with 270 OBP. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> it's tight. It's tight. Well, and this, this is the frustrating part. I guess we'll talk about it on, on Thursday's episode. Okay. We'll talk about what ended up happening in that matchup. So good luck to you today. Yeah, I, you too. I wish you, too. I wish you luck. A couple things that could swing. So, yeah, we'll, <clears> we'll see. Oh, for sure. A lot of things that could swing. The other thing uh, that I think is a big story, Anthony Rendon got a hit. Yeah. First time in a couple of years. So uh, congrats, <laughs> Tony, to get off the schneid, as they say. Um, Who says and that? so that, that's a big uh, – that, that that makes headlines, I think. Get off the schneid? I think that's a the thing they say. I, who's they? Everyone says that all the time. Nobody says I mean, that. There's no, there's no reason for you to be um, like – even questioning that people say that all the time if i type it into google right how do you even spell schneid i don't know if you don't know how to spell it schneid. Schneid. okay schneid. whatever all right where all right. are we going i got next? a waiver wire pickup for you, do you all want, right what do you do got you i want to hear it i want to hear you i want to hear i only have one okay okay uh geo or shella he's eligible at uh many positions in the infield for most sure. leagues for corners and middle infield mm-hmm. um he's only rostered in four percent of yahoo leagues and to start the season he's looked really good in detroit 381 he was a guy who wasn't guaranteed a spot but i feel like he's played himself into a almost like a full-time role with detroit 381 ovp um he's had a couple of runs couple of rbis and honestly i didn't really do i i totally skipped this category when i was doing my prep um so he's a guy who I thought of and it fits. So I have a couple pictures for you when we get to the streaming pictures, but that's all I got for, uh, if you're looking on the waivers, I like Gio sure. Urshela. He's a guy who's going to get on base for you and their team has looked pretty good. Again, they lost to the A's, which how do you lose to the Oakland A's? I don't know. Um, that's baseball season. Uh, but, um, you know, their offense looks good so far. I'll say that. And the Tigers in general look good. So, Maybe if that offense is better than we expected, we could have some decent numbers from uh, from Gio Urshela. Yeah, sure. Okay, I like it. I like it. Um, the one that I went with this week um, is a pitcher who he's kind of on a team that you wouldn't want to go for, and that is Paul Blackburn of the Oakland Athletics. And um, the reason why is he's had two great starts um, and – you know, he's 2-0 and so far, which is uh, – wait, am I looking at the right numbers here? Hold on, sorry. Um, 2024, 1-0. I was like, 2-0 and doesn't sound right. The A's have barely won two games. Um, and he's not going to give you high strikeout numbers, but he's looked good so far. He's had great control, just one walk through 13 innings, um, seven strikeouts. I, I, I'm not expecting big things from Paul Blackburn, but in this – very kind of up and down uh, season with with pitching, how it's going. Uh, Blackburn only being 45% rostered feels like a pretty good, you know, you could probably grab him in most leagues. And, um, you know, if you can trade for him or something, I think he's a good trade target because he's just going to be overlooked being on the athletics. And I think important thing too, is if you play in quality starts leagues, he's got two quality starts so far. So, um, you know, if he throws the slider a little bit more, which um, it looked like he did last year when he had a 22% strikeout rate, which again, not great, 22%. It's not going to, you know, light the world on fire, but he could be a good back end guy, right? I mean, you know, we're not we're not expecting to pick up any aces off the waiver wire, but Blackburn can certainly be like a, you know, back end of the rotation kind of guy. And, um, you know, you get him against some good matchups, he could really, you know, pop for you and, and win a couple weeks for you. So Paul Blackburn is one that I am definitely going to be going to be chasing this week. Yeah, I have so for for my um my pitchers to stream, I I have a couple of ideas here because yeah. to me this seems like a, a home run pick. They're two actually former Yankees, and I was not on purpose. Um, no but yeah, one guy though you mentioned he's not you, that your guy not going to be an ace. This guy has been an ace at times in his career, Frankie Montas. Um, and did, have you seen his start to the season? He's got two yep. wins. If you're in a win league already, he's got two wins, nine strikeouts in 11 and two thirds innings, a 0.77 ERA. So an ERA under one and a whip just over one. Uh, they're playing the the White Sox later this week, and he should get a start against them. I'm pretty sure he gets a start against them and the Brewers. So, you know, 
uh, that should be easy for easy pitching for Frankie Montas and maybe this resurgence, you know, he wasn't healthy with the Yankees. It didn't work out there, but when the Yankees traded for him, they thought they were getting a guy who at times in Oakland could have been an ace. Uh, maybe this is a resurrection of his career in Cincinnati. Uh, so Frankie Montas is a guy who I'm looking at to start this season. Sure. Um, and I will say, so this next guy, one of my, he is a streamer for me because of who he's playing. And he is, I, I do want to kind of tie him into the waiver wire pickups um, because I only had one and um, he was another waiver wire pickup of mine, um, potentially, depending on how deep your league is. But, and most people are going to balk at the name, but it is Martin Perez uh, for the mm-hmm. Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, you know, his whip so far has been atrocious, but his ERA has been fine, right? Depends. It kind of depends on what kind of hits you can take. Right. And so, um, if you just need innings, right, he's not, again, another guy who's not going to give you high strikeouts, but, um, in 11 innings so far with a two, four, five ERA, like I'm going to take that. And the reason why he's a streamer this week too, is he's 38% rostered and he's going against the Tigers, which, you know how much I love the Tigers and you know how I think mm-hmm. they're going to do this year, but their offense has not been the reason why they're, they're doing so well to start the outside season. of Gio Urshela, you know? Yes. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, and so he's one that I'm certainly looking at. Um, did you have other streaming pitchers or I got two more? Do you want to go with any? I have others? one more. I have one more. And again, this is the type of guys who you might drop them in a week, but you don't mind dropping them in a week. I saw somebody commented, I think and was like, Oh, well, you know, you're not going to pick that. Well, it's okay if you have to drop them. And you're not saying this is going to be someone who's guaranteeing you a roster spot the rest of the year. It's another guy who's off to a decent start. He's only pitched one one game so far. Um, he might be starting today or tomorrow for the Texas Rangers. So if you're in a win league, again, good team. Uh, and that is Andrew Heaney, who's in one start had seven strikeouts and four and two-thirds innings. Um, again, so that's good for him. The whip was low, only gave up uh, – a couple of hits in that start. And so good start again for Andrew Heaney so far. And, you know, like I said, a good team, we could see what happens again. There, there were, he gave up three runs in the game, but it was only one of them were earned. So uh, not a bad, not a bad opportunity. Now I think they are playing Houston, I was gonna right? Say, they're playing Houston. Yeah, so I'm not, so I'm it's not a little bit tough. Houston, I, right? I, I don't <laughs> love it, but um, you never know. <laughs> that's all he's a lefty tough lefty against that lineup you know we have tucker and obviously alvarez in that lineup both lefties so the big boppers in that lineup are kind of lefty so maybe he can neutralize them a little bit sure Just so. yeah that's fair and um, he's who again has been good at times so maybe get on in you know, we talked about this last week it's early in the year early trends get in on guys early and then see where they take you if you cut them you have you cut them it's not a big deal but Maybe it's like, oh, my God, Frankie Montas is back to the guy that he was two years ago, and he's picked up already in your league. You know, this is happening. It happens quickly. People, There was someone I looked up today, and I forget who it is now, but I was like, oh, man, I want to pick that guy up. And all of a sudden, he's gone because he's had a couple of good outings. So this is what happens in fantasy baseball. So uh, it moves quickly. you got to find these guys as, as early as you can. Um and uh, maybe these are a couple guys who kind of steal guys that will be great for you the rest of the year. I remember last year, and this is – maybe it says something about my league, but I remember early on Blake Snell really struggled at the beginning of the year last year. And he was uh, he was available on waivers, and I picked mm-hmm. him up. I was like, all right, let's just I, I dropped him last year. I dropped Blake yeah. Snell last year. Let me yeah. take a flyer on this guy. He's been a Cy Young Award winner at the time. He was the best pitcher I, like on my fantasy team by far. Now – the problem with him is he walked so many people. It hurt my yeah. whip. And then also he wasn't getting a ton of innings. So he, it hurt sometimes when his quality starts. Yeah. There were issues there with Blake Snell fantasy wise for sure. But he was a great, I mean, for, for picking him up on waivers in the end of April, like, come on, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And I had dropped him for that exact reason. My, my league devalued walks like walks was an extra category. And so I was losing walks quite a bit. Um, and like you said, he w- he didn't start the year off too well, but then he started to hit a stride where it was just like a few really good starts back to back and he started stringing them together. So remember I told you how in my main league, I, uh, <laughs> I kind of had to punt on saves. Mm-hmm. I'm down 12, one this week. You think I get 11 saves today to win, the, to win that category? This it's, week? it's just saves, right? No holds. No hold, just say yeah. I'm yeah, down twelve do one. Yeah, you could do it. I have, think yeah. I, there's like eight pitcher spots. I don't know how I'm gonna get twelve saves today. Anyone have a double header? All right, go ahead. You have two more, so so go yeah. to both of them. So this next one definitely is one that the way he's thrown so far, he could be forcing a 
this this is definitely a guy that you might pick up as a streamer and hold on to. And he is 7% rostered. And actually, believe it or not, Rami, he has been picked up in our league. Um, so we got some pretty sharp people in our league. And that is Cody Bradford of the Texas Rangers. So if you haven't seen what Cody Bradford's done, you should start to look into it. Um, he pitched originally against the Cubs on March 30th and then again against the Rangers on or I'm sorry, against Houston. He's on the Rangers um, on April 5th. And his outing against Houston was extremely impressive. He went 7.2 innings and only gave up two hits. He only had four strikeouts. Again, maybe not a huge strikeout guy, but um, so far this season, 12.2 innings or 12 and two thirds innings with a 2.13 ERA and a .4 whip. Cody Bradford has looked phenomenal, and you absolutely need to pick him up this week because um, he's got to start against Oakland on Wednesday, um, and then his next opponent will be Detroit the following week. So. He's definitely one. If if he's not, uh, if he hasn't been picked up by now, he should be. Again, only seven percent rostered, so there's a good chance that he's available. Um, if you're in a fan tracks league, and um, yeah, he's got a couple really juicy starts. And if he just shoved against, you know, the Cubs, who yeah, they're okay offense, but then Houston, like, you got to pay attention to him. So um, he's definitely one, Cody Bradford, that I'm looking out for. And then this other one is probably one that I'm going to pick up this week, and then. Uh, drop maybe depending on how well he does in his next matchups. But um, that is Trevor Williams, who again, ugh, most people, right? You hear that name and you're like, oh, he's had some really bad stuff seasons. Um, and that's true. But um, so far he's been pretty solid this year. I mean, he's had one start of 5.1, five and a third innings, and um, he gave up two runs to the Pittsburgh Pirates. So that's okay, right? Pittsburgh's had a pretty good offense, but the thing that I really like about him, you know, he's got a two step this week, so he'll face um, San Francisco uh, on Monday, which not a very scary offense right now. You know, they have potential, but they haven't put it together. And then the really juicy one would be next Sunday against Oakland. So if you can get 10 to, to 15 innings out of him, um, you know, over those two starts and, you know, maybe 10 strikeouts or whatever, the 10 to 15 strikeouts and, you know, he only gives up four runs or five runs. I think that's a phenomenal, you know, phenomenal kind of start to, to grab. And um, I think there's potential for more. So Trevor Williams of the Washington Nationals is definitely one that um, I'm going to pick up this week in quite a few leagues. I like those two a lot. And maybe I could try and block you on a couple of those in your league. Um, a segment we are doing now every week. It's the MVP of our week of the week. It's not necessarily a guy that we thought was the best fantasy baseball player because it would be dumb if we picked Mookie Betts every week, although this week would be a good week to pick him. Yeah. The guy maybe helped us or maybe just we think made a big difference in fantasy and maybe is a little bit more under the radar. Our MVP of the week for this past week in fantasy baseball, who is your MVP of the week? My Sure. Yeah. My MVP of the week, he's really helped me. Um, I, I got a trade offer for this guy earlier in the season and um, I, I declined it early because... in the season. It's early in the season now. Well, sorry, I guess I should say like right as the season started in one of my dynasty leagues. Um, someone yeah. offered me, you know, Matt Shaw and um, Christopher Morell for this guy and Spencer Jones. And this guy is Cattell Marte. Um, mm. And Cattell Marte since Monday has had a hit in every game. Um, and had a good three... week against the yeah. Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. Three multi hit games. And um, the last three games that he's played, he's had a home run in each of them. So three home runs this week too. So he's really helped the, uh, the diamondbacks. I know that they, you know, are losers of three straight, but he has not been the reason for it. Um, he's looked phenomenal. His average is up to 368 on the season, OPS of over a thousand. Um, so Cattell Marte really helped me in quite a few leagues. And, uh, yeah, he, he is my MVP of the week and, and has been one of my favorite players to watch for a while. So this guy, my MVP of the week. I mean, I really was only turned on to him because of listening to you talk on our podcast. So for all those people chirping me in the comments, oh, you never listen when Vince talks. I always listen when Vince talks. <laughs> I I made sure to to get him in one of my leagues, in my main league, in my uh, auction league. Spencer Steer. I mean, what a week he had. This is just in his last week. He was 11 for 12. Uh, 11 for 22, sorry. So that's a 500 batting say. average. Yeah. His on-base percentage was 575. 577. In the last week, this is the last week alone. He's got three home runs, 10 RBIs, six runs, and a stolen base. He's the number two, currently number two ranked fantasy player so far on the season. But in the last week, he's just been absolutely, those numbers are stupid. I mean, they speak for themselves. Outfielder for Cincinnati, of course. Um, and not just an outfielder. I was going to say, base, second eligible, place, third everywhere, base eligible right. everywhere. I mean, 
how is this guy not an MVP? I just moved him around. I'm maneuvering him at different line, lineup spots to get different people plugged into my lineup, probably hurting me that I'm plugging all these. I have so much eligibility with Spencer Steer. I should probably just leave my lineup alone so I'm not plugging Billy Donovan in, who's been really good so far this year, and other guys who end up bringing down my whole batting average and on-base percentage. But that's besides the point. This guy has been incredible. Obviously, the monster home run he hits in the – what was it? The bottom of the eighth inning against the Mets. Um so this dude, and then he had a walk off also, right? So uh, Spencer Steer, he is my MVP of the week, both on the field for the Reds, and then obviously fantasy. It's been translating. Now we do have a new segment, new segment alert. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, this is lock of the week. So we do this. This is a Sunday episode, Monday morning episode. Who are we going to guarantee will have an awesome week this coming week? For your fantasy team, if you have him, make sure he is in your lineup. If you don't have him, if he's available on waivers, if he's available for trade, get him because he's going to kill it this week. Who do you have? So this guy is rostered in 94% of leagues. So, um, or I'm sorry, 86, 86. He was drafted mm. in 94. Rostered in 86%. Maybe so. so maybe he's available. Maybe probably available. Not. But he's probably one of those guys that if you've had him, he's on your bench. Like maybe you weren't starting him. Um, and that is MJ Melendez. Uh, if you drafted this guy, you know what he's capable of. And he is one of those guys. Like I thought the breakout was coming last year. I think I may have been a year too early because it seems like so far this could be the year for a breakout. Um, he's hitting 321 so far and with two home runs over the last three games. He's really started to turn it on, and I'm not going to be surprised if next year MJ Melendez is a top, you know, 150 player because he's got that kind of power. Um, he's primary left fielder for the uh, Kansas City Royals, and you know it's too bad because I, I kind of wish he still had catcher eligibility. Um, and, he, and I know he does in some leagues, and mine um, depends on how many games um, you need, I guess. But um, again, if he is available, I'd be going to grab him, and if you have him, he is certainly a lock of the week because. Um, you know, I, I think that he is in for a big season. And I think, um, you know, this last week was was kind of the start of of what we're going to expect to see from him moving forward. Mine's kind of just for the bit, because he's definitely if you have him, you're starting him already. And if he's again, when we talked about this segment, we did say it was going to be guys who you, you are probably rostered, but definitely maybe not starting. Uh, but my lock of the week, somebody who's just going to have an awesome week and he might be the MVP of the week next week is going to be Matt Olson. He started heating up already over the weekend and he's going to crush the Mets. Um, this is not an admission of guilt that I was wrong. Sounds like Matt it. Olson I was going to say, say, yeah, yeah. No, not at all. I think I never said Matt Olson wasn't awesome. Uh, I did say he was awesome. I just think that, you know, I liked Pete Alonso at his draft spot or draft price better than Olson at his draft spot or draft price. Uh, I still stand by that, although Pete Alonso, my God. We'll see. Whatever. I mean, Forget it's, it, it's a week into the season. We got plenty of time. To, exactly. To plenty of time. Mm-hmm. But the point is that uh, right now, I think playing against the Mets, I think the Braves are going to be awesome. So really, if you have any Braves. Oh, one guy. I have a guy for the guaranteed lock of the week. Bet him to hit a home run on Monday. If you're listening to this on Monday. You ready? I'm, I'm waiting. Jorge Soler. Or solar, solar, solar power. Whatever. Yes. We're trying to make it. We're trying to make it work. It's the uh, so, total solar eclipse. Oh, they, on, uh, Monday. I love yeah, it. You, you weren't that. even paying was, attention. No, I didn't get. I I didn't realize. I forgot yeah. that the eclipse was tomorrow. That's funny. I like that. So he's going to hit a home run. I bet that's going to be boosted, or the other way, or they go the other way, and they like so many people are betting it that they actually give you worse odds on it. But it doesn't um, matter because it's going to cash out either way. It's going right? to happen. He's yeah. going to have a big week. I actually have him in, I think, the league that we're in, I have him. Let me check that real and quick. he's going up against Julio Tehran, Tehran which... Uh, right, who hasn't made a start in what? Like, forever? Wild, and he, yeah. and like I, that's That's what's incredible to me. The Mets have Julio Tehran making the start for them. And yet somehow... Uh, well, no. Yeah. The Mets are starting Julio Tehran but they couldn't figure out a way to get J.D. Martinez up to speed yet? Yeah, I don't know. Matt, Brett Beatty was weird. the What's guy that I was, I was considering looking at because he's available in, in our league too. But yeah, I don't way, know. How good has Jose Siri been? You kind of laughed at me yeah. when I uh, when I drafted him, right? Um, No, I don't think so. I laughed yeah, at you when you drafted yeah, you Starling Marte a little bit. Although, no. Mm. Mm, yeah. I, I don't know. Like Jose, Jose Siri steals bases, episode. gets on yeah. base. Six, oh, six stolen bases so far in the year. I'll have to in look nine at that games. One. I kind of sure. like it. 
Sure. Okay. All right. We'll look back. All right. That'll do it for us today. Um, I have to go catch a nap and a train. So I will yeah. talk to you guys all next week. Until then, I'm Take care. Yeah. We'll see, yep. you, uh, see you Thursday. See you Thursday.